heading to one maritime plaza. Please make sure your seatbelt is fastened. For any questions, press the call support button to speak with a rider support agent. Drop off in 41 minutes, okay? So we've got an interesting situation here at the beginning of this, which is we have this light rail here that I think might be waiting on that other light rail to depart before it can go down. That's correct. Although the thing is, uh, this lane for the cars is open, so it could uh, it could actually like Waymo go. could go right now. Yeah. So what happened? What did it say? But what it's doing right now is it's waiting for this light rail. So we're we're in a holding pattern right now. Okay. It sh the car should go. Yeah. Our team is working to get you moving. Oh. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Like. So I think this is an interesting... Uh... This is a really interesting scenario. We, we've we been in Waymo enough lately to kind of see those weird scenarios that it's in. Like, I almost wonder if they're taking over right now. Waymo takeover. I wonder if this is a Waymo takeover, because remember they're Waymo saying we're team. working to get you back on the way. Our team is working to get you moving. Yeah, and then uh, people are honking, honking at us, at us. From behind. I, and I wouldn't sweat at it too sweat it too much. You are back on your way. Please make sure your seatbelt is fastened. But how strange! Because here's what I bet is going to happen. He'll go like this. This light rail here will go, and then we'll proceed after the light rail goes. Yeah, that's interesting um, because uh, it could actually literally. Oh, look! And then there's some people over there. Like fucking with the car. Oh man, look at him. I think he's like a crazy. Oh look, what is he doing? Oh, he just he just sat on the car. Oh, we're gonna have a Waymo incident. Oh man, he just. What's going on over here? He just sat on the car. Turning hazard lights on. Disturbance detected outside. Our team is monitoring the car. We'll take action if needed. Can we call in the support and talk to them? Like, yeah. Connected to rider support. Yeah. This call may be recorded for quality assurance. Hello, this is John with Waymo Support. We receive a notification from the car. Is everyone okay? Hey, John. We had somebody just walk up to the car, play around with the sensors, and sit on the uh, sit on the hood of the car and take a photo or a selfie. I see. I'm really sorry uh, for what happened there. Give me one second to check what's going on here. We were, one. but prior to that, we were stuck because the light, because the vehicle wouldn't pull out. The light rail was kind of blocking it. You'll see what happened uh, in the notes, but anyway, we figured we'd call to it. We're on, we're All moving. Right, I, yeah, I was going to say we're moving now, but at any rate, you can go back and kind of see the notes if you need to. And it says roadside assistance. Okay, thank you very much for letting us know what happened here. All right, thanks. Thanks, John. Oh, sorry, what's that? No, 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 you're fine. No, no, but tell him. Uh, oh, let me... You know, no, it says uh, roadside assistance is six minutes away. We don't need roadside assistance anyways. We are on the move now. Yeah. I understand. That should clear in a minute. Okay. Uh, let me just make sure that your trip is okay and uh, it will be getting to the drop off. Okay, give me one moment. But it was, this is a really good feature to, That's have, amazing. to have a remote support. Right? Yeah. So, like, there will be situations where a car will get stuck. Like ours. And I wanted to kind of go out on a day like today where we were going to be able to experience it a little bit. Yeah. As far as... Um, oh, there's another camera over here recording. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, I wanted to... I, I really wanted to go out on a day like today and experience it, right? Because... I think if you just do small point A to point B drives, yeah. the likelihood of you coming across something, uh, a traffic complication, if you will, is low. But 
if you go out and you put, you know, 15, 20 miles on the vehicles, you're going to come across in situations in town that come up. Yeah. We've had a few today, but I think the thing that the, the key takeaway here is intervention free. Hi, me, the rider. I did not have to go up and actually sit in the driver's seat and ever take over this car. That, that's what I think is so fascinating about this. Yeah, exactly. And I think... Oh, thank you so much for taking the reading. Oh, hey, John. And, uh, yeah everything here in the system and uh you know good now the car is getting to the your drop off spot thank you very much for your patience and will there be anything else i can help you today no thank you so much for your help all right no problem and uh you guys have a good day okay take care you too thanks all right bye 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 so i mean we just had that one situation where we actually had to call in to support yeah to ha because we had that one which you'll see in the video footage of the guy jumping on the so the guy jumped on that the thing uh, that's okay well, Even... what sensor did he play around with up front that's more of what i'm curious about well i think he was just like he just sat on the the trunk uh the frunk whatever uh the bonnet uh, and he just took a selfie of himself with the self-driving car that was weird though. Very like, weird. You know? But anyways, before that, the car got stuck. Yes. There was enough space. Eventually, it did make that maneuver. Even though the, tr the, the train was right next to us, it did make that maneuver and got going. But initially, it got stuck. Initially, it had quite a bit of hesitation. So I think somebody from the remote team it monitored. It like that. They monitored that it's okay to go and they gave it a green signal to go. Because you felt like it hesitated to go into the lane to like start off. For sure, because it started and then it stopped. Yes. And then people were honking from yes. behind us. Yes, yes. The honking, the, uh, the litmus test of honking. The litmus <laughs> test of honking, yeah. So that was interesting. Um, that was probably the most, uh, I would say, intense is not the right word to describe it, but that was the most... Uh, extreme situation I've experienced in the Waymo so far. And to be honest with you, was it a little uh, intimidating? Maybe. But for someone who's used to the technology and knows kind of what's going on, you just knew that you were going to sit there for a moment or two, right? And I think that that's kind of the important thing to realize with this new technology is that it has a couple of growing pains, but overall, I mean, overall, the majority is good. Yeah, exactly. And I think even like uh, from uh, the perspective of the person jumping on the bonnet uh, of the vehicle, I think he only did that because uh, it's a self-driving car. He did not, maybe he did not realize there's somebody inside the car or something. Maybe. And he just did it. Um, but uh, those are to be expected, uh, I think. Um, growing pains. Right? Growing pains. Yeah. Uh, and again, uh, there is like different ways to solve that problem. But other than that, I think from technological perspective, from driving perspective, uh, it drove us uh, for almost an hour. Uh, it was pretty uh, good um, ride. And uh, now that it came to pick us up, um, it just got stuck at some point. Um, it's right at the beginning of the ride. At the beginning of the ride. But now it's just, again, uh, same back kind of smooth sailing. smooth sailing back again. So heading back to uh, our starting point yeah back to our other full self-driving car exactly <laughs> autonomous vehicle uh, yeah so now again i think this is an interesting point because many people noted uh, previously uh, to me is uh, oh waymo have like uh, remote operators making decisions but i don't think that's a bad thing i think taxi services have remote people to help out the certain customers right? i mean we call tech support all the time for go. credit cards yeah. for as simple as yes. like credit transactions yes. bank we call uh, customer support for uh, you know our gadgets are pretty much everything yes so what's the difference of uh, calling and in fact maybe tesla at some point will have remote operators too maybe I mean, I, I could see that being a possibility because then that would allow them in current iterations of FSD to actually launch this kind of similar to what Waymo is doing right now. Exactly. So I, I personally don't find anything wrong with the remote uh, support uh, operators. I think it's a good because um, uh, we are on our way back again. So 
uh, Vemo. So v Vemo just sent me a message. Okay. So guys, uh, uh, I will stop this live recording right now. Uh, but yeah, we are on our way. There's nothing wrong. Uh, we are totally safe. There's, yeah. you know, there's no like problems. Uh, and I think Waymo customer support did a fantastic job. Incredible. Uh, incredible. And so this is the wave of the future. Exactly. And so, anyways, uh, we'll uh, we'll have some more videos. As you can see, we have quite a bit of cameras here. <laughs> so we'll have some more nice edited videos. Uh, Andrew is a really magician with videos, so I look forward to uh, the edits. And uh, yeah, we'll share it with uh, with the community. So thank you for joining, and uh, hope you have a great day. So bye. Yeah, what a cool. Obviously, it was a bit intimidating off of the the start, no no doubt, with with how the the start of the ride was. But how it was handled, I think, was handled very. Uh, Is intimidating the right word? I don't know. I I I think my vocabulary doesn't allow me to. Yeah, because uh, in my in, so intimidating is something that is that frightens you, like yes. you're like afraid, like you know, fearful or something. Uh, for me, I think it was more about even like the guy jumping on the bonnet. I, I didn't I did not feel anything about that because. Uh, I have seen those incidents happen in San Francisco being reported, and people do that for fun, whatever. So I have a, I can tolerate that. Uh, for me, uh, in that moment, uh, the only thing um, was uh, also personally, I thought the car should have gone. Oh, for sure, off the get go, it, it had space to go. Yeah, and I'm not sure why it was hesitant of that. Right. But it, it got us into a very interesting or awkward situation. It was super awkward because we were blocking the traffic and people were getting uh, in, um, uh, impatient yes. and they started honking. And I think you're, you're correct in calling me out and saying intimidating being the wrong word. I, but I do think awkward is, is more, you know, a more appropriate... Perfect word, awkward. Yeah, yeah. It was just awkward. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a more appropriate word <laughs> yeah. choice there, yeah. awkward. Uh, yeah, no, the whole... But it was handled, uh, I would say, professionally, like very professionally by Waymo. It and was. there's no one in the car. Exactly. <laughs> uh, exactly. And it was not like, hey, you know, uh, why don't you uh, jump into the driver's seat and, and yeah, take it over? Yeah, like, oh, you know, just the keys are in the front. You know, just yeah. uh, be sure to put the seat in a comfortable position. And actually, did you notice one other interesting point? It says uh, roadside assistance and on its way in six minutes. So, so they must have. They must have people. Yeah. Okay. But why wouldn't you though? Why wouldn't you? If it's your fleet, yeah. you're managing it, yeah. why wouldn't you? So I think at some point, no, the, the reason I, I'm bringing this up is even for Tesla robo taxis and for Tesla fleet management, so I'm thinking from TESME perspective as Absolutely. a company, yeah. it would be a real role for people to provide this kind of roadside assistance yes. if the car gets stuck in some situation, yes. get it out, get, get it on its way, yeah. on its way. Or if you have external factors that you have no control over, yeah, like a person that did what what he did, or the, the like the patron that came up and that wanted to take a selfie, the gentleman you're describing, right? yeah, Waymo can't control that. You can't control what what's going to happen in the environment around you. Yeah, right? all you can do is react to it and choose how you react. Uh huh. And a fascinating thing is, is that autonomous vehicles will always choose the correct course of action. Yeah. And it will always be the safe course of action. Which exactly. Is fascinating. Yeah. But I think uh, uh, you know. I mean, this is just a very fascinating topic of discussion for me personally. Good. Uh, because when I think about like uh, you know different kind of uh, personalities and, and and human behavior, uh, again uh, going back to that person jumping on the bonnet. For me, it was casual. Like I did not think of anything of that because I knew he's just gonna take a picture and and get on it on his way. But for other people, they might get like uh, nervous, like, what the hell is, is my safety? Like, maybe a woman or, you know, like... Uh, I'll be honest, I had those feelings. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not from a big city. Yeah. It's not something that I okay. see people do all the time. I'm sure you hear the stories. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah. You know, like, uh -huh. like, oh, I'm sure it happens. But I, typically it doesn't, like... I you see, know, so like, okay. These are, these are stories that you hear about yeah, and it yeah. never actually happens. Okay. Later. And so you're like, oh... What do I do? Do I yell at the person, like, get the fuck off the car kind of a thing? Or, or do I say, like, you know, just let it happen and let them yeah. go out? I don't know. And then here's the interesting thing. I think that you have to call into question. Society 
in general, and this might be a deeper conversation or a deeper topic that might not be TESME related, but society in general seems like we're at a very um, tipping point mm -hmm. where you have people that are on, like we've talked about this even with, with the full self-driving, that you have people that are for it completely and almost maybe to the point where it, it comes off as fanboyish, right? And then you have the opposite where they want to see it burn, staked into the ground and, and hope to God that the technology goes nowhere, right? Yeah. But I feel like you, and you feel this way too, that the truth lies somewhere in the middle of, yeah. of all of that. Yeah. And I think getting people to start waking up to the reality that our world, and I think our, the reality is, is that our, our, our environment that we live in, it's not a world of black and whites anymore. It used to be a world, uh, it used to be that way where, you know, maybe it was because of the size of the, the world, or maybe it was technology and communication and how we talk to each other, right? But our world is so gray and it's beautiful because of it, right? The, the series of, of gray that create the painting that we see every day that make up our society. Yeah, exactly. And uh, this is a very, very, like you said, uh, uh, deep philosophical sure. discussion. <laughs> and I'm happy to have these discussions because, um, uh, you know, uh, w you said it right. We're at a tipping point. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the automation, the robotics, um, the car driving itself, um, the chat GPTs of the world, LLMs, and all this like new um, uh, technology uh, improvements that's happening. It's such a rapid pace. Even engineers in Silicon Valley don't quite grasp mm -hmm. the implications of that. Uh, and um, for so there's a lot of hype. There's a lot of fear in the industry. But the the truth is in the middle. Is like okay, well. Uh, you can completely oppose these uh, technologies or you can try to figure out how does the nature of work changes in the future. So like if you have this like, so I personally am a techno, I, I like to call myself a techno optimist. Absolutely. Uh, and I like to think that, um, you know, uh, as, uh, as human beings, we can collectively work together. Uh, and if we uh, think of it from, from the perspective of uh, an abundance mindset, then uh, think of how much productivity these robots will bring. Um, uh, think of how many uh, dangerous jobs that people risk their lives doing and the robots will do it. Uh, and even if you know something happens to the robot, we'll have another robot do it. Uh, so it will save lives, it will save human effort. And so now, of course, uh, there is a deep philosophical discussion about work. What yeah. does it mean? How do you raise family? How do you earn money? Uh, and so those discussions definitely are very important. Um, and uh, I think the leaders of this world, uh, they need to start having these discussions, if not already. I agree. I, I think a wise man once said that technology solves problems. Yeah. But it, I think in a way that this technology is solving problems, I think the one thing that it is enabling us to do is actually have the discussion. And I think that's something that happened back in the industrial revolution that it enabled them to start talking about, okay, hang on, this technology is gonna exist. What's the future look like? And I think us being in that moment, it, it hasn't fully, it's starting to gain traction. I think you feel that as well amongst the circles you run in. And people are starting to understand that this is possible today. And when it starts to gain more traction, I think is when we'll start to hear these more grassroots conversations, similar to the one that we're having now, mm -hmm. of, okay, what next? Like, okay, the fact that it can do it, we're proving that it can do it today. Yeah. So now what do we do with this time? Yeah. Like, we're doing, we're choosing to do a video vlog, right? In a sense of uh, make light of the time, be, do recording and, and be productive. Others might choose to do exactly that, be productive on a laptop or, or be on a, a conference call or things like that. And th the amount of ideas are incredibly endless. It is. And uh, I, I personally feel like, you know, if you really embrace the future with open mind, uh, you can think of the opportunities that it will bring. Yeah. But if you're a closed minded person, uh, then uh, you would you'd be very fearful and you will get left behind. Um, 
But going back to the nature and the future of work, I personally believe um, that we should find a way to have some kind of universal basic income. Um, I, I know there's a, lot, there's a very controversial topic um, uh, politically and stuff like that. I personally uh, feel that with all these technologies, uh, the single most biggest advantage of that for humanity could be that every, people don't have to worry about housing, food uh, and energy. Yeah. And so that's the promise of sustainable energy future is if you can harvest the energy from the sun, uh, if you have transportation which is electric, uh, now uh, okay, so let's let's make sure that people can take care yeah. and you know certain basic things are provided to them. Yeah. Now of course it doesn't mean that if somebody wants to buy a yacht or a, or yeah. a jet plane then then the society uh, foots the bill for that. I don't mean that. Yeah. But, but I think at a certain level uh, this word um, this is encouraging. Did you see that? So smooth. <laughs> I, I, I got to strive so apologize. Yeah, yeah, that was, was, was awesome, right? But I was yeah. Like, so smooth. Yeah. So smooth. It just passed a vehicle that was turning left. That was and it was not even like a, a group of vehicles, just one vehicle just turning left. But it figured that, okay, well, there's a lane open. I'm going to scoot, scoot over. I saw the other vehicles that were doing similar ideas. Yeah. So I'm going to go with it. I was yeah. So smooth. And see that guy's checking out what's going on. Yeah. If you rolled on the window, he'd be surprised to see your face. Yeah, have a conversation with him. <laughs> did, did you try it? How much that cost? It's, it's, it's like an Uber drive. Like Uber? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's sick. Have you ever tried it? Have you tried it? Uh, I've just seen them like. Oh, the other download, the download, download the app. Download the app, yeah. <laughs> so, see? Like, people are excited. Yeah. Uh, and uh, all you need to do is uh, strike that conversation. conversation. Yeah. And we just did a conversation, and now he will download the app. Oh, this might be a deeper conversation. Oh, oh, philosophical time. Okay, let's do it. Go for it. I was resistant to roll down my window. Why? And why is society resistant to roll down their window? Yeah. So you know, again, this <laughs> That's is. That's I said. Though. This is this is this is deep philosophical time. This, I'm this, so sorry. This is, <laughs> and uh, this and also. I've, and I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but like in some ways, I feel like yourself, like I, I side with you. Like I'm a technology person. Yeah. I do believe in this. And I think that it is the future. Yeah. But I find myself in that scenario where you were like, oh, roll down the window and, and have a conversation. Yeah. I, you were a little hesitant. I, I, I philosophic, that. Yeah, tell me philosophically. So, so I'm here, so curious. So, so here's the thing. So I think, uh, and um, maybe it's just like the personality traits as well, right? Uh, for me, it's... For me, it's very easy to talk to anybody. Hmm. Uh, and uh, again, uh, that's uh, that another reason I started TESME is it's all about people at the end of the day. Hmm. It's not about like, okay, let's uh, show some ads and, you know, uh, just make some YouTube videos. Those are good. Those are helpful. But what's really impactful and helpful is real human-to-human uh, -human conversation. So again, going back to my risk tolerance of being adventurous, trying new technologies, uh, this is another aspect of my personality where I will just talk to anybody. Fascinating. Uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, not saying this is, uh, or judging you in, in any way sure. or fashion, uh, but uh, some people, they're more reserved and uh, they don't uh, quite um, feel um, uh, so excited to like just talk to random strangers, which is completely fine. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Um, I, I would think in some ways it's your personality types of... Uh, is it now? Here's a fascinating. This is more deeper dive philosophical Let's question. Go for it. Is it natured or is it nurtured? In other words, is it how you were raised or is it something that you were kind of you you have to you learn those traits based off of where you live geographically in society? So that's a fantastic question. Uh, it's uh, it's nurtured. Think so? Yeah, for me. From your from for family. Uh, right. For me, uh, so uh, so you said natured or not? What, what did you say? Nature, meaning like in other words, is it something that you, uh, you think of like a chameleon? Like in other words, you kind of blend in based yeah. off of the environment you're in. That's yeah. kind of the nature of your of where you're at. You would take on those traits. I see. Nurturing is what is your parents or your your family kind of giving you those traits and those ideas throughout your life to make you 
be more open or more uh, does that make sense yeah it makes sense certainly okay so uh, good to clarify so it's nurtured as well as natured both of them okay a combination uh, so I come from a business family and uh, if you're an entrepreneur or if you're running a business it just becomes your automatic nature to uh, to to form relationships and talk to people uh, because it's uh, the business demands that as you create uh, new opportunities yeah. the way to create new opportunities is uh, by creating new relationships the way to create uh, meaningful relationships is by talking to people uh, and you know uh, knowing more about them and being curious about them um, so okay so mine's the opposite okay and I can tell you in in what what aspects why mm -hmm. Think of me being, being more studio environment, yeah. video editing, yeah, yeah, yeah. production oriented, where you've got to be heads down and more focused on, on your work, yeah. right? But your work will speak for itself, right? Right. It's not like, it's, it's, it's not that any way is wrong or yeah, right, yeah. right? But it's just so fascinating in the environment that we live in, how my, I, I was always raised in an environment where my product had to speak for what it, what I stood for, for what I, I wanted to, for the quality, for the way it was edited, for the way that it sounds, all, all of that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, so I mean, that's, uh, I definitely think that uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, it's, you know, for a lot of people, they are much more heads down, focused on their work. Uh, let their work speak for themselves and stuff like that. I think that's great. Uh, that's uh, because we need a combination of. Uh, oh, Ooh. wow! Yeah, allowed, it gave way for that. Too. It gave way for that. Uh, but um, we need uh, more uh, good balance and combination of both uh, people who are heads down, like scientists and stuff, right? They're doing research and, you know, they're not, so we would not call them like super extrovert personalities. Yes. Uh, they're, they're socially awkward a little bit as well. <laughs> or I'll, I, I'll be the first to admit, I, I'm on the spectrum, it's diagnosed, so I, 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 I think brainy types like that they typically are <laughs> yeah more reserved and you know like but, I, but to your point i think the, the most important takeaway here is that that's why platforms that living in a digital age yeah tesme really allows people to come together who are like-minded similar to like how x allows people to get groups together and you know meet people like how you and i met yeah on, on x right it gets people that have similar interests similar likes to kind of come together and, and make really good friendships, right? And I think for those that are on the spectrum, it kind of lowers some of the barriers. Yeah. It's like, okay, maybe they're not gonna judge me for being, like for having a hunch or exactly. not making eye contact all the time. Or, <laughs> like, like these things run through my head. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I don't know. This is, a, this is a very good point actually. And so, you know, that's another reason we thought, you know, uh, some people, so, so some feedback we got was, hey, I really, you know, uh, I'm interested in uh, autonomous vehicles. I'm a Tesla owner for a while and I love to talk about it, but I'm a little, you know, introvert yeah. and I don't want to give like in real life experiences is there a way I can provide virtual experiences? Uh, and so we launched this virtual experiences feature. It's yeah. like, okay, well, if you uh, don't feel super comfortable like meeting strangers in real life, uh, talk to them on phone or on video conferencing uh, yeah. from the comfort of your home, you yeah. know? So, all right, so I think... Uh, in case the... Fr so we have this camera that I'll cut to. Okay. Uh, this has our microphones. This is the one that doesn't die. Hi, everybody. This is the <laughs> hey, good. So, yeah. The one that's been facing forward is our GoPro. Obviously, okay. we know how GoPro is. Sometimes they overheat. It is what it is. But we still have the one that's facing us that's blinking. So it's, if we are not going to change the battery, uh, I would recommend just take that off so that there's a better view. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay, cool. I can do that. Perfect. And then just in case that camera does die, what <laughs> we'll do is we'll give myself a little sign off. Okay. And we'll say, uh, just in case this camera dies, yeah. we appreciate you joining us along for the ride. We tried to do a much longer Waymo route. I think this was originally on the, the start of this ride. It was saying it was going to be about 40 minutes or so. 40 minutes, yeah. Which was perfect. It gave us a couple of scenarios. It gave us a chance to chat. Philosophical discussions. Philosophical discussions <laughs> were had. Oh, my goodness. It went down all kinds of rabbit holes. Yeah. Uh, but in case that camera does die, we thank you for joining us. And make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all those fun things that we, we are supposed to do uh, as uh, good stewards on these platforms. Yeah, this has been, uh, this, uh, been uh, really fun. And thank you, Andrew, for, you know, um, for coming down and having this ride and uh, talking more about our platform as well. But thank you, everybody, for joining. And if you have any questions about FSD or you know, buying your next Tesla, 
uh, or you, you're a Tesla owner, uh, sign up as a host on Tesla. Uh, and if you want to learn more, sign up as a guest. Um, we look forward to having you and uh, yeah, uh, enjoy your day. Absolutely. Well, I figured we might as well have All right, it just yeah, in case. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, just in case. Okay, just in sounds case good. Battery dies. But look at this, man. This is so cool. This is freaking cool, huh? This is so cool. I, 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 I have no other words for it other than just it is so cool. Yeah, so let's see what's, uh, what's the message uh, Waymo sent us. Thanks for flagging this issue. Would you be able to share where you saw this and include the street name intersection when you saw it? Was it as well as provide any other details that might be helpful to pass on to a team to look into this on your behalf? That way we can address this as soon as possible. Uh, just now. It was at the, at the seeing spot. this, uh, but we are already on our way uh, there was a, a the incident there was an incident where um, uh, where a person jumped on the bonnet on the bonnet of the car and took a selfie and went away. And then uh, the car was confused uh, and got stuck. I would say it was. I think it was confused I, and got stuck, right? I would say it hesitated to begin driving at the beginning of a ride. Hesitated. Because uh, it was parked, remember? Like, it wasn't actually moving. It was like it hesitated to start that. Yeah. Ride. So at the, And then the car was uh, hesitant um, to start driving. But I think it was hesitant to start driving even... Be okay, so there I'm we go. I'm so glad we yeah. did that sign off. <laughs> we still have this camera. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll leave this camera as like my main camera. Angle. Okay. Do you want to move that a little further so that it can see the properly? Because right now I think it's super blocked. The view is super blocked. It cannot even see the steering wheel. My thinking of leaving it here... Okay, it cannot even see the steering wheel. Oh yeah, no, I can't even see the screen. But I think the car was hesitant to drive even before the car, the guy jumped onto the bonnet, right? Yeah. Yeah, and the car was hesitant to start driving. Um, oh, actually, I got an idea. So, got stuck. There you go. Apologize, viewers, for the minor technical issue with my overheating cameras. <laughs> if you have GoPros and you use the battery-operated version of the GoPros for any sort of duration, you'll, you'll feel my pain, especially in the 4K60 setting. I have relocated the Action 4 to be slightly more forward, but obviously we lose the POV angle from that perspective, which, eh, let's be honest, I have a face for radio. Mm. <laughs> See, the good thing is uh, we got everything on live stream, even that guy jumping on our car. Uh, you are back on your way, please make sure your seatbelt is fastened. But wait a second. Where's the guy? Yeah. He should come. Oh, oh, it's uh, two minutes down. It's like it's two minutes past this. Oh, okay. you and I were chatting for a moment. Oh no! no look, the car already started. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh good. Look at what is he doing? Oh, I just got he just he just sat on the car. <laughs> oh man, he just what's going on over here? He just sat on the car. <laughs> All right, they can see what happened. Man, this is so cool. We got it on live stream. Hey, we'll uh, go viral. Uh, I, I, I hope uh, the news channel or something fix, hope, fix us up. I hope something that, like that. That would be Whoa! cool, man. <laughs> oh, man, that would be sick.
Tonight, live at five. <laughs> Bay Area news. Breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> I can see it now. And the funny thing is, is like we had that conversation after the incident. Yeah. In this vehicle yeah. together, you and I. And it was just so interesting and like how the majority of viewers out there probably won't watch the entirety of our conversation, which makes sense, right? Yeah. But I feel often so much is missed sometimes from just reading the little 15 second or 30 second blurbs. If you don't actually do, do the homework, yeah. read the entire chapter, come to the, you know, come to the lecture prepared. It makes it very difficult to have a conversation. It does. Um, and, um, uh, is it possible to have subtitles on our, on our video? Like yeah, it always does that. Like the, oh, yeah? Yeah, it auto, like in YouTube, it auto-generates. Oh, very good. Yeah. Oh, nice. That would be awesome. Like if you look in, uh, like, I've, I've never actually done the, I know what you're talking about. Like with subtitles, you can actually upload a file. A SRT file, yeah. Yeah. It's called the SRT file, yeah. But if you just let the system, it'll auto-generate auto it. And it's wow. actually pretty accurate. Yeah, that's awesome. Here's the more fascinating thing. Uh -huh. You can actually, like on my YouTube account, you can ask it to auto generate uh subtitles in other languages really yeah that's this sick. Is so cool that is sick yeah all right look at this 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 uh, puppy is still driving us <laughs> i you know and it's like moving around did you notice it's like it scoots around and it just keeps going <laughs> it's, it just kind of snakes through the the city and gets <laughs> us from point a to point b and just slithers on on down through the it just does a really really good job i think at some point what will happen is uh, they will take off the seats based on some safety uh, new safety um, uh, frameworks and they could have uh, much more like um, uh, opa uh, like um, reverse the seats have this have these people yeah me. exactly and like much more like a lounge kind of setting. Have you seen, uh, oh, there's a Sandy Monroe interview, or, or um, I believe the brand is called Canoe. Canoe, oh uh, yeah, okay. Okay, and their concept for- They have something like that, what Where I'm it's saying. a more yeah. open concept yeah. that allows people, that's a really nice setup. It is, it is. Im imagine having a family dinner or like a work <laughs> meeting or something just and the car yeah. is driving you and you're just chilling, enjoying. Say you live in Southern California. Yeah. I, I grew up in San Diego uh -huh. and what my family we used to do down there a lot was we would go to uh, the amusement parks like uh -huh. Disneyland or Universal Studios for just the evening Yeah. because we, would, we were annual pass holders, right? Can you imagine if you had a self-driving car of what you're talking about right now? Okay, everybody, let's go get our dinner and then just go get in the car and we'll just watch Netflix on the way to Disneyland and then we'll get out and see Mickey Mouse. I mean, like, seriously, this exactly. is amazing. Exactly, right? Oh, amazing. man, and the future is really, really awesome. And then because the autonomous vehicle was driving for you, now dad's not super frustrated because he didn't have the, the pressure of getting his family safely to the amusement park and that kind of stuff. Yeah. He was able to enjoy his family more. Exactly. And that's almost priceless. It is priceless. And you know, a lot of times what happens is if you go on a long road trip, it's mostly the driver who is yeah. most exhausted yes. after the trip. And everybody else uh, is like super excited. Hey, let's go, let's go. But the driver is like, no, I want to rest a little yes. bit and then we will go out. But now uh, when I go on road trips with FSD, I'm, I always have that energy topped off yep. because I'm mostly just observing the car. Um, Can you imagine though, when we get to do this in our vehicles where like, this is incredible. I could have been sleeping. I think right I now. think by end of the, I would be surprised, really surprised if we, we cannot do that by end of this year. I would be really surprised. I don't know if it's going to be this year. Okay. I, I, I don't want to be the pessimist in the room. I see. I love being the optimist. Yeah, yeah. But I think some of it was because my optimism with version 11 was so high. Yeah. In thinking that we were going to achieve it with the 11, I have a little bit more reserve this time around. But I think that the technology exists. Yeah. We're showcasing it here yeah. in a, a commercially viable operation. Yeah. Way more. I only think it's a matter of time. Yeah. And I'm so excited for that future, for what it means for drivers, for for everyone. Oh, man. Um, I agree with you. I think um, if not this year, next year for sure. Oh, man, look at this. Oh, so I got to wow. ask you this. On the Model S, uh -huh. does the bright lights that are on right now in the taillight bother you? No. The two bright ones that kind of look like, those, uh, those are the fog lights. A little bit, actually, to be honest. It I, does. I wish the fog lights were automatic. Yeah. 
because I do like the fact that when it's foggy outside, I have this on my Model S, right? Oh yeah, okay. Where these lights can be turned on from, okay. from the screen under, uh -huh. under the light setting. Which year Model S do you have? 22. 22, oh, yeah. nice. Uh, what color is it? Red. <laughs> nice. It, and I, I've heard Model S is, uh, is, the, is the ultimate road trip car. It's awesome. Yeah. I've taken my car from uh, Washington all the way to Kansas City, Missouri. Uh -huh. It kind of similar to how you did your long Texas. trip to Texas. <laughs> Mine was brutal though. <laughs> the best example I can give between the Model 3 and, because uh, I own two Teslas. I have a Model 3 from 2018, dual motor long range, and then I own the dual motor uh, Model S. I don't own the Plaid. I, and I did that specifically because I wanted the range in the uh -huh. vehicle. I've done two similar trips uh let's just count washington to las vegas that trip in the model 3 was 11 charging stops because you have to go through utah even doing the same route with the model s it's five wow yeah it, it makes a difference when you have a four a four in front wow. of your range estimate. it makes a difference wow so when people are talking about online like oh the cyber truck only does 250 miles or whatever and they're like that's fine for me I love the truck. I, I please don't get me wrong. Love the truck. Very excited about the truck. But oh, wait a second. What did it do? Oh, it got in the wrong lane. It got in the wrong lane. When you experience a vehicle with a 400 mile range, yeah, it's life changing. Yeah, because what you can start to do is, you've driven from here to los angeles i think before right or even your long distance trips right yeah yeah you can start to pick the chargers yeah that you want to skip yeah and you're like oh i want to skip that one skip yeah. that one that's a 250 kilowatt charger and you can kind of play around a little bit more with yeah one. yeah no I, it, I, yeah. the other thing that i think is underrated that people don't yeah, yeah. it is there's nobody in front oh, wow that's yeah. pretty cool yeah it's, i've never seen one before you should try it it, oh, that's awesome. It just works, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, download the Take Waymo care. app. Yeah, thank you. Um, See, that's the advantage of having the windows rolled down. True. Uh, people people uh, come up and ask questions. Yeah, yeah. And, and like I said, I just... I just love talking to people, man. Yeah. It's like so natural for me. Uh, although, but, you know... Going, going back to your uh, question, uh, I was not always like this mm -hmm. uh, because I started as an engineer. Uh, I was also kind of like, you know, very heads, down. heads down kind of thing. But then I realized that in life, um, if you need to grow and really open your mind and really like accomplish some, some you know, bigger uh, purpose, uh, you need to uh, be out there and you need to be uh, open to new things. Now, of course, uh, not saying I... Well, some people are kind of weird and you, you will come across them once you open yourself. Uh, some people will hurt you, uh, maybe, sure. uh, because you're kind of vulnerable as well. But life is this, man, you know? I think in some ways, to your point, yeah. it's kind of like what I do for a yeah. living. Yeah. Uh, a truck engineer, a show or a broadcast cannot be put on by one individual yeah it requires a team of people to yeah. come together yeah that know their roles look, 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 oh, down 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 your window that know their roles so so they they were walking and they uh, came back just to see they are to, probably tourists uh, they didn't realize that the car is driving itself uh, and so this is like very fascinating oh man and look at the views um now the only thing andrew is because they, of the sensor suite it blocks the sunroof what yeah, the hell? I know. They need I to figure the, something out. I thought the same thing. I, I thought the same thing. They need to figure something out. Yeah, because yeah, of the sensor suite, you don't get the beautiful skyline views. Look at this. Being able to look up. Hey, Andrew. Yo. Guys, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. 
and uh, I'm actually uh, very excited to take you to my one of my favorite places here. Okay. They have really good food, um, nice wines, Moroccan place. Okay. Uh, the best hospitality. I'll let you with the judge of it, but they're really, really cool people. Oh, you, you yeah. don't let me down at your food places, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll follow your lead. I'm cool. I'm very easy. You know me. I try to be easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other than so, when I put Wilson up in the air. So since since <laughs> when did you uh, become vegetarian? Just about four or five years four ago. Four or five years. I think I told you my weight loss story, right? No, you didn't. Um, I, you were super heavy. Uh, Three hundred and fifty was my heaviest. What? Yeah. Uh, I had a friend one day tell me, uh, "Have you you've heard of it? Intermittent fasting? Where yeah. Essentially, yeah. So he told me about that, and I went extreme, and I did what's called a twenty-three-one, where you eat only one hour a day. Uh huh. And I did that for a couple of years, and I still try to do that yeah. as much as I can. Um, but for me, it broke my. Uh, for me, it broke my. Uh, that unhealthy, like, yeah. you know, what I'm trying to say, like, like that unhealthy desire between food and and uh, uh, trying to fill a void. I think in some regards, I, I never felt that way. I guess, but for me, it it it, it was able to to help me break my inner fat child, and yeah. I still am an inner fat kid at heart. Yeah, you know, I love uh, eating bad food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, but when I made that decision back then. I, my story of why I went vegetarian, Uh I was looking into buying a jacket because I had gained more weight, right? And I was like, oh man, I need to get a jacket because I gained weight and fill into this, you know, at any rate, they, at REI said, this jacket said it was ethically sourced down. And to my reaction was, what the fuck does ethically sourced down mean? Yeah. what What does that mean? Yeah. And so... I won't, I'll spare you the details, uh-huh. but you, if you choose to, you can look into what ethically sourced down is. And it just means that it's kind of like, think of it like cage free eggs. Okay. Uh-huh. There's still the chickens have to go through hell and there's all that nonsense. Yeah. Right? Um, so if I was going to make that lifestyle change, as far as the 23 one, I figured that it would be so easy to just make another lifestyle change and just go vegetarian. And if I was wrong, society would position away and they would, um, and I made this statement four or five years ago. I said, if, if I'm wrong, society will continue on the way that they are and you won't see much innovation or change Uh from, from humanity. Yeah. Well, four or five years later, where do you have? You've got Beyond Burger. You've got Impossible Foods that, yeah. that's come out. That you have all of these uh, plant-based protein substitutes. I mean, this has just happened in the last five years. Yeah, kind of like this yeah. technology, right? Mm-hmm. I think it just takes time for. It's kind of like what we talked about: rolling down the window. Yeah, of society to that heart yeah. that was hardened I think yeah. during COVID and you kind of entrench your your thoughts and your beliefs because it's easy mm. right it's that human nature of how mm. you, how you live life oh it's supposed to go straight but it's okay we'll that's go. okay well, yeah, yeah. this is our drop off oh it's oh perfect well then look how it pulled over this has been great mm-hmm. all right so I got my microphone uh, yeah, don't forget anything 